Hi everyone, well today's video is going to be a December update uh, with two of my specimens plus another one. Now this one here, I'm going to be showing you a updated version of how to tell if your tarantula is in premolt or not. Now the one I'm going to be showing you is a neural specimen called a Thrixopalma cyanolum, which is a cobalt red rump. Now this is a new world species, as you can see they have a bald spot because they love to kick urticating hairs and they leave what's known as a bald spot on the abdomen. So not to worry about that as the hairs do regrow after the molt. But I just want to draw your attention to the color of the bald spot. As you can probably see, I'm just going to zoom in and put it on macro, it is a darkish blue black color. So whenever you see that, that means your specimen is definitely going to be molting within the next few days. I kind of predicted that this female will molt, seeing that her colors aren't really the greatest. Uh, you can probably see that she is kind of blue and she's supposed to have a red abdomen, but she really needs to molt and she'll be molting in a few days, hopefully by Christmas, because that would be a really sweet Christmas video, other than the feeding video. So at this point, you know, uh, you're just not going to feed your tea. Uh, just make sure it gets plenty of hydration because hydration is really important in order for your tea to mold successfully. Now, other conditions that you'll see that uh, you'll have the abdomen spot, uh, which is probably the most dead giveaway that your tea's in pre-mold. Other than that, if you have an old world or if you have a new world that doesn't really kick too much hair like a Girozea, you're probably noticing that uh, your tea is just going to be sitting into one spot. Uh, they might start to web around that one spot and stay there. They tend to get very defensive if you try to bother them and some of them will refuse to eat. Well, that's a great hint that your tea will be in pre-molt. Even with old worlds too. So yeah, so that's my cobalt red rump in pre-molt and that's how you tell if your tea is in pre-molt and will be molting shortly so I'm just gonna give some hydration to her later after the video but I want to draw your attention to um, an egg sac unfortunately it's not my Isabella my P. Cancerity Haitian brown bird eater but of course um, every black widow I ever get it's always well caught and they're always bloated on the admin and they're potentially gravid so this is the one I got from the pet store, uh, who, which they originally got it from a grocery store. Um, anyways, yeah, of course egg sacs, <laughs> this is probably the, the easiest species that I ever get that has an egg sac because every time I buy them they're always wild caught and they're always pregnant. So that's a good sign. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to block all these holes uh, with a uh, screen because <clears throat> I don't want to be moving that spider, especially with their egg sac. But the meat and potatoes of this video, if I can find my flashlight, I don't know where that might be, is that, I'm just going to use my phone. One of my pokies is in pre-molt, and I thought I should like to share it with you because this is an interesting pokey. Uh, this is my crossbreed of a Ornata anivitata that I like to commonly call it as the ghost fringed ornamental. I mean, she's molting in a really great spot because I can see her right away and hopefully try to take out the molt and, and sex it for you guys. Even though that pokey molts are not always the best intact. So, there we go. Whenever your tea is in pre molts they'll make a web bed and they'll profuse web builds like this pokey did and they're just going to lie in there and basically just wait it out for a couple of minutes or maybe close to an hour or two and they're going to start pushing themselves out of their own body so whenever uh, they actually molt, you'll see the whole exoskeleton, which kind of looks like an identical tarantula. <laughs> I mean, I uh, got a lot of comments from my OBT video. They're asking uh, that, uh, what happened to their tarantula? Did they get eaten? No, that's the molt. That's the shed of skin. That's what they do. So anyways, I'm going to document 
uh, this molt and see how long it takes. Right now it is currently 7.15 in the evening. And yeah, we'll just document it and see how long this girl takes. All right, everyone, so I'll talk to you in a bit and we'll document her molt and maybe we'll try to sex it. All right, so time to update the molt on the pokey. Right now it's 9.08 p.m. As you probably can see, she is starting to molt now. She is moving. You can see the new fangs way in the back where it's translucent white and these are the darkened fangs so you can see that the newer exoskeleton is starting to come out of the older one oh she's gonna be really really nice when she gets out <clears throat> starting to make up the colors already here's the interior legs now this is a hybrid for those of you who are joining in that's a cross between a nornata and a vitata And it's pretty cool. I mean, couldn't ask her to molt in the better spot. <laughs> I mean, keep an eye on her and whatnot. It's so cool to see a molt. And hopefully, if I can catch that Thrixel Pelmelton molt, hopefully before Christmas, I'll be even sweeter. All right, everyone. So it's about 9:30. 3 uh, p.m. and looks like I just missed the molt. Didn't really take that long so she is pretty much all done. You can see right now uh, she's grooming herself. She's trying to feel her new skin. I'm sure she looks like a million bucks right about now. You can see her legs are pretty long and she's probably got good coloration on her body and hoping that she turns over so I could um, get a nice shot of her. That is really cool. Alrighty, so how you retrieve the molt? I mean it's a beautiful molt from a pokey. And right now, hopefully you can see this. I'm going to try to spread open the abdomen area. Now if you have a good molt like this, all you have to do is open up the abdomen area. So what I'm going to be using right here is uh, chopsticks. And just carefully spread it out. There we go, that's perfect. Okay, so I opened up the abdomen area with meat scores. Basically, I just took the abdomen mold and just very, very carefully spread it apart. And this is basically how you tell if you have a male or female. This is usually 100% guaranteed if you know what to look for. Now, if you have a female tarantula, you'll notice that on the in between the book lungs, this is where you're going to have your spermatheci, which is a sperm sac, and if you have that, then it means you have a female tarantula. If you don't have it, then you know that this could be a male. So, mm, I believe this could be a female. I don't know if I can see this, but 
I'm just uh, zoom in for you guys so you can see it. This is where I'm concerned about. That's uh, hard to do this one handed. Right about there. Now, if it was a male tarantula, I wouldn't be able to see that. I don't know. I kind of would say male at this point, but I could be wrong. Now that I confirmed that could be a suspect female, now to measure how large she was, I always measure tarantulas by their leg span. It's very rare that body sizes are used, but I prefer leg span. It gives me a more accurate measurement of how really big the T is. So the way I measure my tarantulas is that I measure them by their leg span from tip of the first leg to tip of their last leg. So I line the ruler up at the zero mark and st stop at the leg here. So she was close to around 14 centimeters. So if six inches is 15 centimeters, 13.5, 14, I would say she was around five, five and a half inches before. So she could be around five and a half, maybe even at the six inch mark. But very, very cool. I love this pokey. Okay, so looking at the molt more closely, yes, I can definitely make out the spermatheci. It's located between the top left pair of book lungs and the top right book lung. The book lungs are those little white bags. And you could just, just make it out. I'm going to zoom in and try to focus the camera on there so you can vaguely see it. It's very small and it's not often that I get pokey molts this good but you can see on my female there is the epigastric furrow right in the center of the abdomen where the molt would be so you know for sure that now this is a 100% confirmed female that's how you sex your specimens you never look at them from the dorsal side and figure out that this is a male and a female tarantula like for example like this bicoloratum just because it has a big abdomen you can it's not really a great identification to tell if it's a male or female I used to do that a few years back and I got surprised with the big the Amelia that looked female when I bought it and then it molted into a mature male. Yeah, biggest shock of my life. But this is why I totally rely on these ventral and molts, probably molts. It's the best. Here you can see the fangs are translucent white. Now, whenever you have a tarantula that just molted, you should never disturb her in any way, shape, or form. I am going to be putting uh, some water over the substrate to give it a little bit more humidity in here because it looks very dry. Uh, make sure she gets plenty of water and do not feed for a week. So these fangs, as you can see right here, they're translucent white. They take it about a week to harden into the black ones. And as soon as they're black, you can resume feeding again however you see fit. Now this is just normal. She's just grooming, she's just feeling her new skin. I mean, she looks absolutely gorgeous, uh, at least from her dorsal or her ventral side. I can't wait for her to flip over and see, but I'm just giving you like a little tutorial on how to sex tarantulas, mainly and to show off this girl molting. It's such a shame that I missed kind of the whole thing, but usually teas molt between two and four hours. 
All right, so I'll take another clip when she's flipped over and you can see how beautiful she is. All right guys, got some humidity in the tank here. All I did was soak a little bit of water and soaked the bottom layers of the substrate. This is how I retain my humidity. I don't like misting since it does aggravate the spider and since you're only wetting the top layers, if you're in a very warm and dry room like my room, humidity dries up very quickly here. But anyways, it's 1125 and she just flipped over so I just wanted to show you how incredibly beautiful my <laughs> hybrid pokey is. And I'm not going to touch her because uh, she just freshly molted and doing so might actually cause damage to her since she just recently molted and she's pretty soft. But she's absolutely beautiful. I mean you can look at her purple highlights around the carapace. I'm not sure if the camera's picking up well but yeah so this is what a Fetata and Ornata crossbreed looks like. I can see the Ornata in her. I mean the colors. Got a little greenish in there. Right, there we go. An absolutely gorgeous tarantula. And of course, my friends, I will not breed her. I don't want any crossbreeds of pokies and bracket palmas since these guys are under the endangered species list and more of the wild caught specimens are dwindling down and in order to keep the pokey bloodlines alive and well, we got to breed them in captivity. Oh, there is the carapace, but yeah, I would say about a good five and a half inches. Probably has a little bit more growing to do. I would expect her to be at least, I don't know, six and a half, seven inches as an adult. I don't think it'll be as big as an Renata, but still a very nice looking specimen. Alright everyone, so this is the video of showing um, and sexing my Pocletheria vitata cross ornata, which is the ghost fringed ornamental. Alright everyone, so she won't be featured on the upcoming feeding video, so we'll have to wait about a week before we can feed her again. The same goes for that uh, T sanulum. Alright everyone, thanks for watching and enjoy the video.